There are many parts of Ireland that claim to be the land of saints and scholars. But here, in Strabane, we have produced some of the finest minds, the finest writers, the finest musicians that ever came out of Ireland. Cecil Francis Alexander was one of these people. Cecil Francis Alexander had moved to Strabane when she was 15 years of age. Her father was the steward for the Marquis of Abercorn. She was a well-read young lady, very interested in poetry, and her background was very much influenced by the Oxford movement, which tried to revitalise Christianity in the church. But Cecil Francis Alexander is best known for the poem she wrote. She published a little book of verse for children, and from that, in 1884, came such gems as Once in Royal David City, there is a green field far away, and all things bright and beautiful. There is one man more than any other who has gained worldwide fame, well, particularly in America. His name was John Dunlop. Now, John Dunlop was born in the mid-1740s in Meeting House Street in Strabane. And at the age of 10, he was sent to an uncle in Philadelphia. His uncle William was a printer. And the young Dunlop learned the printer's trade. And when his uncle retired, John Dunlop bought over the business and he made his living from printing religious tracts and sermons. But in 1776, he gained worldwide fame. He was given the contract to print the American Declaration of Independence. On the evening of the 4th of July 1776, Congress read their Declaration of Independence from the British. And John Hancock instructed the printer from Strabane, John Dunlop, to print the Declaration. John Dunlop printed 200 copies of this and they became known as the Dunlop Broadsides. Subsequently, Dunlop joined the cavalry and fought alongside George Washington at the Battle of Trenton and the Battle of Princeton. In 1784, he established a daily newspaper, the North American and United States Gazette. Now, it wasn't the first newspaper, but it was the most successful. science and education, two Tyrone men stand out worthy of attention. George Sigerson from Straban and James McCullough from Glenelg. James McCullough was born in the townland of Landahussey in Plumbridge in 1809. He was a gifted mathematician. Indeed, you could say that he was one of Europe's foremost mathematicians and physicists. Although not a lover of politics, so affected by the Irish famine, he decided to stand for election for the Dublin City University constituency in the Westminster elections. He lost. This 
and his own awareness of his diminishing mathematical prowess led James McCullough to tragically take his own life in the same year. So beloved was this mathematician and scientist that his funeral procession stopped the streets of Dublin. That unassuming, generous mathematician James McCullough is buried here in St Patrick's Parish Church in Upper Bodoni, Plumbridge. Now let us go and find out a little more about that other scholar, George Seegerson. The wind is howling hard tonight around this house of stone. It brings me back in memory to my childhood in Toronto. I can see myself in those bygone days, run barefoot through the grass, and then along the dusty road and along Sheeran's Pass. I can feel the stones beneath my feet. They were hard and sharp and sore. That poor old road is tarmac now. The potholes are no more. If I close my eyes, I can hear again the wind in the trees on the height. I can hear the suck of the rush of the burn as the water falls only in white. Oh, God be with those happy days when we ran wild and free. They will always be in my memory when I hear the wind in the tree. That remarkable man, George Seegerson, was born in Holly Hill near Strabane in 1836. He was an outstanding scientist, an expert on the nervous system, a prolific writer on scientific subjects and a university professor. He was a noted linguist and in a way he was a true Renaissance man. He translated many Irish poems into English and was president of the Irish Literary Society. He helped found the Fesh Kjol and he made probably his greatest contribution to national life in 1911 when he established from his salary in UCD the Seegerson Cup. And today it is the oldest trophy in our national games. When things go wrong and will not go right, though you do the best you can, when all looks black as the hours of night, a pint of plain is your only man. Now those words were written by a Straban man, Brian O'Nolan. Some authors are lucky to be remembered for one name, but Brian O'Nolan is better known for three names. His own, Flan O'Brien and Miles Nagopoulin. He was a, a child of prodigious genius who went on to study in University College in Dublin. And in 1937, he joined the civil service and there he remained until his death in the mid-1960s. We know him better for his journalism and for the books that he wrote, three in particular, The Third Policeman, At Swim Two Birds and The Poor Mouth. Now The Poor Mouth was a parody of all things Irish. Uh, he creates a place, a landscape, where the Gaelic is perhaps too Gaelic, the authentic is perhaps too authentic, and the poverty is certainly too poor. Framed on a murder charge, he pens his autobiography in jail, and there he tells his story. Only a Straban man could do that. 